All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're continuing with dates. Not the most exciting topic potentially, I know, but an important one nonetheless. So we're talking about formatting dates. Right now we have dates, times, date times, all stored in a somewhat clunky, uh, condensed, but difficult to read, at least for human, uh, difficult to read format. So it's not very nice. So how can we extract things out of, let's say a date time, how can I convert that so that it says something like, uh, April 21st, like the full month name, followed by a space, 21st, 21 ST, and then the full year, rather than, you know, 2017-04-22. So we're going to do that. First thing I want to show you, though, is that in the documentation, there's a pretty massive list of date and time functions. And I will be honest with you, uh, most of these... I never use and you likely will never use that won't stop me from showing some of them to you and I'm gonna try and highlight which ones are most important and the first few I'm gonna show you I don't actually think are that important but they are nice to know that they exist and they're uh, a set of these one-off little functions I'm not sure even what to call them but basically there's a group of them at least in my mind I group them together things that will extract an individual piece of information like day or day name or day of month day of week day of year hour month minute um, so let me show you what i mean so i'm going to hop over to cloud nine and we have a select star let's only work with birth date for now so we'll do select name comma birth date from people okay so Instead of displaying the date here, or the entire date, what I can do is use some of those things that we talked about, whatever that group is. Let's try day. You'll see what it does. So rather than birth date, I'll select day of birth date. And all that it does is extract the day. So if we compare, actually what might be better is if I keep birth date, and I just add in an extra column with day. So it's extracting the day, 11, 25, and 21. So there's other things we can do. Let's just go with this list I have up here, day name. And this is a bit more useful. There are times when you wanna do this. Um, as you can see, we're extracting that. So turns out this is a Friday. This is a Saturday, and this is a, uh, another Friday. I know some people can figure this out mentally. There's a whole trick to doing it. I'm not one of those people, so we just have to trust it that this is indeed a Friday. Um, moving right along, we can try day of week. And you might wonder, how is that different? Well, it gives you a number. So a Friday is a 6, a Saturday is a 7, a Sunday is a 1, and so on. And then we also have day of year. And that will tell us, starting from the beginning of the year, how many days was it until, oh boy, I messed up the parentheses. Here we go, until that date. So for something on Christmas of 1943, it was the 359th day of the year. Oh my God. Blue, come on. Blue. And this, of course, takes into account things like leap years. So important to know. Um, with that said, these also apply to date times. So if you tried to do it on time, if we start right there, instead of doing birth date and you tried to do birth time, well, there's going to be an immediate problem, which is we're not storing day of the year or day information at all. But just to show you, we don't get an error. Right? We get warnings, but we don't get something that breaks everything. We just get null. It doesn't work. But we can do it on a date time, and that's what, like I said, I use most of the time. So if we do birth DT instead, you can see that it's giving us the correct numbers here, 359, 111, and so on. So we can, we can use all of the ones we've seen, day, day name, but there are other things too briefly that work for date and date time so things like month 
So that tells us the month. Uh, what else is there? I think there's a month name. Yep. So if you want the full name of the month, there we go. And then lastly, when we're working with the time, so if we go and change this to birth time, there are a few methods that apply here. We can do things like hour, if we want to extract the hour or minute. Now I don't end up using time on its own that often, so I don't really end up using these minute or hour or second on their own ever really. So that's part one of formatting dates. Imagine if you wanted to do something like this. Instead of just printing out you know, the day or something, we wanted to say April 21st, 2017 at, I don't know, 6 p.m. maybe. Or we don't even need that. Let's just say April 21st, 2017. So how would we take this date that would be 2017-04-21 and convert it to this. Well, we could use what we've already seen and do a giant concat. I won't make you do this entire thing, but basically we could extract the month name to get this and then concatenate that with a space. And then this part's a little trickier, right? We need to, it's gonna be a pain, honestly. Uh, you would have to, have some logic that I haven't shown you how to do yet because you don't always add ST after a number. What if it's a 23rd? Um, so that's a little bit more complicated. So let's reduce it to this. So for that, we would want to get the day, right? And then we want the year. So you could do a giant concat. Basically, we would take all of these for birth date. This is going to get messy. And the point is that there's a better way. But imagine you're doing this. So we have a concat month name of the birth date, comma, with a space, comma, the day of the birth date, comma, another space, comma, the year of the birth date. This is a bit of a mess. But let's see if it does work. So we'll just select that from people. There we go. November 11, 1983. December 25th, 1943, or 25, 1943, April 21, 2017. So it does work, but this is not a great way of formatting dates. And in fact, there's a much better way, which you probably gathered because the way that I set this up, there's an entirely uh, separate method or function, excuse me, that we can use, which is called date format. So date format is really, really useful in my opinion. I use it all the time. What it does, it looks a little intimidating looking at the documentation, but what it does uh, is it allows us to format things nicely and powerfully. We have a lot of different things that we can do. So these are called specifiers over here. There's a table of them, and they're basically little symbols, little shortcuts that allow us to specify what we want from that date. So let's say we're working with a date time, and if I want to get the month name, I use percent sign capital M. And if I want the month number, then I use percent sign lowercase m. If I wanted to get the day of the week as the weekday name, I use percent uppercase W. If I want the day of the week as a number, I use percent lowercase W and so on. Uh, so what we do is combine them together in a string. Uh, and when you pass it into date format, it will take a date and then this string of how you want to format it, and it will spit out a nice answer for you. So here's an example. Excuse my fridge there, or my ice maker, I guess, being noisy. So we've got date format of this date time here. It works on date times and just plain dates. So here's a date time though. My fridge making so much noise. Okay, I think it's done. So we have this date time and we're formatting it with this, which looks a little bit like gibberish, but we have percent uppercase W, which gives us the day of the week as uh, the word, the name of the day of the week, and then a space, which gives us that space. Then we have percent uppercase M, which is the name of the month. 
So we have October and then another space. And then we have percent Y, which gives us the year. So really useful and versatile. I'm just going to just copy this one over, just run it so that you can see what happens. If I hit enter, we get Sunday, October 2009. But we're free to put whatever we want in here. So we can do dashes. Not that it really makes sense, but if we put dashes there, it still puts the important information here that we specified, but now they're separated by dashes. So it gives us some freedom. We can do, you know, group them together like that if we wanted to, put commas, or we could put an entire word before or after. We can do whatever we want. So this is really, really useful. Um, if we go back and select, let's work with date time. So we'll do select date format. And then we're working with birth DT. And then some string that we'll, we'll provide in just a second. We'll come back to that from people. We can start with something really simple like just getting the day of the week as a, yeah, we'll do day of the week first as a word. So uppercase W. We could do something like was born on a Friday, Saturday, a Friday. But as you saw, there are a bunch of other things that we can do here. You know, we can work with hours and minutes. Uh, we can work with seconds, month names, tons and tons of things. Uh, it's really versatile and very useful. And typically the things that I end up doing with it are just formatting dates so that they look like, you know, uh, at least in the US where we put the month first, followed by the day, followed by the year. So that's pretty simple to do. Think about how you would do it though, if you want to give it a shot. How do we take this and change it into that. So we can do that now. All that we want is the month number, right? So that's percent %m, I believe, followed by a slash, and then the day, percent %d, followed by the year, which is percent %y. Let's see if that works. Almost. If you notice, I use lowercase y, and that gives us the two, uh, I don't know what you call this, the abbreviated year, the last two digit digits of the year. So we want uppercase Y. And I just happen to remember that, but if you couldn't remember how to do it, you can consult this. And we'd find it, where is that? Year numeric four digits versus two digits. So let's wrap all this up. We talked about a lot of different ways of formatting dates. I frankly don't use these that often, like I said, because you can do the same thing using date format. Uh, I should mention there's also a time format. It works exactly the same way. Um, you just you know pass in different you pass in a different formatter here. So you're not going to be able to get month, day, and year from a time, but that you can get you know hours, minutes, seconds. But like I said, I'm not working with times as often. And if I am using a time component, it's within a date time. So I might do something like this at, and let's say, let's just do hour and minute, and we'll put a colon there. And there you go. So I'll do something like that, uh, but I'm rarely working with just a time, but there is a time format if you do need to do that. Okay, so back to where I was wrapping up here. Um, there are all these weird one-off functions. I don't use them though because you can just replicate it using date format. And it's much easier for me just to remember one function, date format, rather than 15 separate functions. So that's the basics of formatting dates. Next up, we're gonna talk a bit about doing math with dates.